Morning, Ben. Thanks for seeing your slides through again. Pleasure. Um, interesting, interesting stuff we've seen, and uh, yeah, a lot weather dependent again. Yes, I think that's right. It's a lot of things that are beyond our control, but that we can still plan for if we leave enough time. So the first thing to say is that autumn, I think, has arrived with a bang. I can't remember the last time autumn happened so suddenly, uh, all of a sudden in the last two to three weeks, the weather seems to have turned from reasonably benign to hot in the day and cold at night and clashy and windy and wet and cold, um, which has caused uh, lots of things, really. The first is a spike in pastorella in lambs, uh, either pneumonic pastorellosis. Um, so the bottom right hand corner is some consolidated lungs there. And then the top left hand corner there is some uh, pleurisy in some lungs, often with selenium deficiency, as we'll come to later. The other form of pastorellosis in lambs is uh, septicemic pastorellosis, where instead of concentrating on the lungs, it concentrates on the whole body. Um, so you get ulcerations in the esophagus and lots of lesions in the liver where the bacteria settle out in the liver. I mean, the difference is slightly academic because the, it's the autumn weather that's the trigger. That's the important bit. Um, the lambs probably who are most affected by this, if we show the next slide, are the hill lambs that those guys have been on the hill for most of the summer. And then suddenly a lot of things happen to them all at once, don't you think? They get weaned, they get moved, they get um, stressed they, into a completely different diet from what they've been used to. And often, very often, these lambs are very short of selenium. Very often, they're very naive to worms. So they walk into a lot of worms often in the in-by pastures um, and their immune systems aren't very good and they're stressed and they often haven't been vaccinated either. So those lambs, very often um, the mortality in those lambs is often very high. The other thing we ought to consider this time of year is ewes that at weaning um, are carrying an injury or carrying a disease that they aren't going to be able to cope with when the weather turns nasty like it has. So the, the one on the left there is a ewe with an abscess in its lungs, the one on the right there top is a ewe with OPA and the one at the bottom middle is a, a ewe with uh, laryngeal chondritis. And you have to be ruthless, I think, at, lamb, at weaning time to weed these guys out because they, as soon as the weather turns horrible, there is no wriggle room and this weather will take them out. If we go to the next slide, the, the, the hinge point for all this stuff is weaning time. And um, lambs have to hit the ground running at weaning time, which means that a month before weaning time, they need to be prepared. That, that, like for example, at clipping time is an excellent time to catch hold of lambs and give them give them whatever vaccines you need to give them and give them selenium so that they're not immunocompromised when they um, when they're weaned and they hit the ground running and they can face these challenges and survive them. So it's a case yeah. of um, plan ahead. It's a bit late now, but put in your diary for next year to plan ahead because there is no fat on the system at uh, in autumn when the weather turns horrible and it's merciless you need a month a month to six weeks for the animal to respond to the vaccine so yeah yeah it's better to do it weaning than not at all but mm. you've missed the boat you could yeah yeah you know, completely get much better value for your, for your money yeah the other things that you see in autumn are the normal autumn things um i think the next slide is yes here's a here's a uh, a typical autumn cause of death here on the left is acorn poisoning when it gets windy the acorns start falling the lambs are a bit hungry because the grass is getting a bit sparse um, and on the right here you can just see some leaves of a yew tree which in a windy day had fallen down and the cattle um, for some reason made a beeline for the yew and so you have to be extra, extra vigilant for all these poisonous plants to which these cattle might gain uh, access at the moment, especially now when we've just had a storm. When you're looking round, make sure that they don't have access to any of this stuff which has fallen down uh, in an autumn storm. Uh, and then the last thing to say about lambs is that lots of people now will be bringing lambs in, feeding them on creep, thinking about um, getting them fat and you can kill them with creep, but more commonly you can kill them with by inducing pulpy kidney by feeding them creep. So really no lamb that's ever that hasn't had uh, two doses of a pulpy kidney vaccine should ever be given creep because it's you will definitely induce pulpy kidney by 
giving them creep. And every year I see this and every year it's completely uh, unnecessary. If they haven't had any jabs and you really have to wait, uh, do them now, do them in a month and then give them some creep or you'll definitely kill some. And then if we quickly move to cattle, there's only one thing I want to say about cattle because I don't want to confuse the issue and that's grass daggers, uh, low magnesium. So the, the problem with low magnesium is that the demand for magnesium from the calf sucking milk outstrips the supply from the milk and supply is influenced by intakes. And if the weather is horrible, cows tend to sit under a tree and just sulk and don't eat as much as they normally do. And if in, on any one day you don't eat as much magnesium as the calves are sucking out in milk, then you die. It's as simple as that. It's as simple because you can't store it. If you don't yep. eat as much on any particular day, you're on a knife edge and you die. It's that simple. Your heart stops. Um, and the big thing that you always I always think often think that magnesium staggers should really be called sodium deficiency because sodium is absolutely essential. You cannot absorb magnesium without sodium. Um, and a lot of pastures in the UK are deficient in sodium. Yeah. Good advice, Ben. Good advice. And uh, we, we talked a little bit about um, lungworm and um, uh, liver fluke last time. Yeah. Is that stabilised or are they going... No, lung, lungworm is a clear and present danger and so is gut worms in um, in sheep. And I saw um, some acute fluke the other day migrating through the liver of an alpaca, of all things. So they definitely are out there migrating. And I think mm -hmm. we're probably still at the uh, serology stage. So if you haven't done it yet, then go and blood sample some lambs to see if they're generating antibodies to... Um, Fluke. fluke yeah so it's, it's definitely liver, out there yeah liver fluke that we're worried about here yeah um no that that's interesting because we have seen we have seen a few cases of fluke up and down the country um and yeah it, it's uh, interesting to hear what you're actually seeing on the pm table mm. it's a good um mirror to the world i think yes 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 but the worms are still there because it's warm enough and the fluke is still getting going so uh, on top of all the aut autumn stuff, we've got to yeah. bear that in mind as well. Yes, all the usual stuff too. Yes, and yeah. remember that the, st the store lamb worms is going to be the pivot point for deciding your worm infectiveness next spring. So yes. it's doubly important for the lambs themselves yeah. and for next year. Yeah, um, and 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 yeah. you know, for, for those lambs, they're going to take a hit after weaning. So mm. try and find somewhere where lambs haven't been in the second half of the summer to put them. Move them, house them, sell them. Exactly. Them <laughs> if we could deal with all our problems that way, that would be ideal. Wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you very much as usual, Ben. That was uh, most enlightening. And uh, we'll catch up with you next month. Great. Excellent. See you then.